when it's just cool out, but not so frigidly cold, not snow and ice yet, I always just think of hands because I don't want to do bare feet when it's cold. That's miserable. Um, I have rain outs. You know what that is? It's like when your vasculature like tightens up and your feet get really cold, your hands get really cold. Um, so it's just uncomfortable. Like I don't like to be barefoot, even if it's just like just the tiniest bit cold. So I always think hands because your whole body's conductive. So any part of your body touching anything and it doesn't have to be the ground. So when there's snow on the ground, just look up and think, are there trees, even a pine tree? If you touch a pine needle with your hand, you're grounded from head to toe like you're laying on the beach. When it gets even colder and you don't even want exposed skin at all, there's tons of products out there. Uh, I carry them on my website if you wanna take a look at them. I have a link in my bio to my shop, but I'll just rattle off some so you know that there's options out there. And they're pretty inexpensive. Like you can get fancy and buy grounding shoes and such. Um, so that's an option. But then you have to be careful that you wear conductive socks because if you have thick wool socks or whatever, and then you have a grounding shoe, it's not gonna go past the socks. So you're not gonna be grounded anyway. So, um, but there's shoe stickers. So this is a more eco-friendly option that you don't have to buy a new shoe. Nothing's gonna go into a landfill. It's just a little sticker that sticks on the bottom of your shoe and runs into where your foot is. So you can either be barefoot inside there touching the sticker or you can wear conductive socks and stay warm. And the other thing too is you can just have boots on and stay bundled up from head to toe and just have one finger touching a metal pole or a tree or anything outside that's conductive and you will be grounded from head to toe it, even just if one cell of your body touches the earth in any way and it doesn't have to be the earth as in the ground it could be anything growing off the ground or anything that's conductive that's on the ground like sidewalks cement trees like i said so you can also get conductive gloves so that you don't have to have your fingers exposed so it go right through the gloves um, and then there, I even make conductive, and I have a TikTok of this if you want to see how I do it, but I make conductive um, hiking sticks and canes so that you can just ground through your hand and it doesn't matter if, even if there's snow because it'll go right through the snow. And then after that, if you've run through all those options, then you might want to think about sheltered places that keep you a little bit warmer in the winter, um, but cut down on like the wind chill. And, and so for example, for me, I'll just give you an example. I like to use my garage because I have a cement floor in my garage and I have a chair out there and a little space heater and a blanket and a book, or I bring my laptop and I can be grounded in my garage easily. And I can last a lot longer than when I'm outside, especially if it's, you know, rainy or icy or snowy. So a lot of people have basements um, shelter, like a shed, um, gazebos, something that's a little bit sheltered. Some people even pitch a tent and cut a hole, you know, cut the bottom out of the tent so that they just have a shelter and they can go in and still touch the ground. And then the other thing you can do is run, put a ground stake outside. So it doesn't matter what the weather is and run a cord in through your window. You can shut and lock your window right on the cord and clip it to a grounding tool inside. So my favorite one for winter is my, um, grounding hot water bottle. Cause then you're nice and toasty and you can sleep with that, like curled up on your stomach or on your chest. Or if you're not feeling good on the sofa, I also have grounding blankets, that kind of thing. And you can even plug into an outlet and use the grounding system of your home, but there's just so many, so many different options. Can we use the plants inside the house? You can use plants inside the house, but you have to ground them. So the minute a plant, so you're right, just like we're totally conductive from head to toe. And if we ground through our fingertip, if we're holding hands with someone else, we're so conductive, we'll actually ground that other person. So if your child is grounded, you know, maybe they don't mind the cold and you're bundled up. If you're holding hands, you're grounded through your child. If you're playing with your pet, like this gal, <laughs> and I just petting her or holding her and she's on the ground, then I'm grounded through my grounded dog. Um, and so, but when we're removed from the earth and we go inside, we're not grounded anymore. So it's the exact same thing as, uh, for a, uh, I'm confused by some of these swiping things, but it's the exact same thing as a plant. So it's fully conductive. And if it's rooted in the ground, it's totally grounded. Even the top leaf on a top tree is grounded. I have uh, patients who are on second and third story balconies that have beautiful trees that the br branches go over the edge into their balcony and they can just stand totally off the earth. Um, and hold a leaf and they're grounded as if they were down on the earth because that's how conductive trees are. But the minute you uproot it and put it in a pot and bring it inside, <laughs> my dog just fell. Um, she's okay. Uh, it's not grounded anymore, but you can ground it. So just like you can ground a human being with a ground cord and then touching a hot, the hot water bottle I mentioned or a blanket or a mattress panel or a bedroll. If you touch something grounded, um, then you become grounded. Same with the plant. So if you put a plant stake in, a grounding plant stake into the soil and run that in either through a stake or plug it into your grounding port of your home, now the pot, the soil, and the plant is grounded. And I even have a YouTube video, and I think I might have uploaded it on TikTok too, like a shortened version, where I put a ground stake in, 
and this beautiful plant. And I show you how the furthest leaf on the longest, you know, it was one of those long trellisy type plants that have long extensions. And I showed you on the very end of the very leaf, I'm still grounded if I just touch a leaf. So you can ground through plants inside, but you do have to actually ground them. So if you're going through the trouble of grounding a plant, then you might just want to get a grounding tool that grounds you directly instead of the plant. But some people ground their plants just for the plant's health, because I don't know if you guys saw the movie The Grounded and Heal for Free, but those are two documentaries on grounding, and I was in both. And in those documentaries, we show that if you ground a plant, the they grow taller, they bloom longer. I don't know why, like, hotels who spend, like, millions of dollars on like centerpieces or like wedding venues. Why don't they ground those? Those flowers would last two and three times longer because it's healthy for plants to be grounded just like it's healthy for us and just like it's healthy for your pet. So um, so you can ground it just for the plant's health even if you don't want to ground through the plant. Grounding while doing breath work is lucky. I know. I have a TikTok um, if anyone wants to be guided through it and I show it sitting outside doing it and also sitting inside on my organic little grounding mat. I have those hands sewn out of organic materials and I'm sitting on that in one of them. And I just put my hand on my, my uh, heart and on my stomach to really just drop my awareness down. And what I like to repeat is while I'm breathing in and out, I'm at home in my body. I'm at home in my body because you just need to feel safe here. If you feel safe here, it's amazing how much stress can lift from your body. It doesn't matter really as much your circumstances, as long as you feel like it's okay to be in this earth suit. And so I do like com combining that with grounding because when you're meditating or just doing a mantra, they've done medical studies that show that even just mantra, just picking one word or one phrase that you like. So for me, it's I'm at home in my body over and over and over that it actually healed PTSD and insomnia as well as going to a psychiatrist and doing talk therapy and being medicated. So it's, it really puts your brain in a healing state and so does grounding. So doing it together, immediately your brain shifts and you're in a healing state and you start becoming centered. And then of course with grounding, there's all other kinds of healthy benefits head to toe in your body. Um, oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, so <laughs> you'll just need to go to church. I don't think that they're exclusive. I think you can be super religious and, and get grounded. Um, I don't think that there's any, because again, like we're spiritual beings, but we are wearing an earth suit and we can't pretend that we don't need air and we don't need water and we don't need food, right? So another more direct way to get the healing that the earth provides. So no matter how spiritual or, spiritual you are, you recognize I have to breathe, can't go three minutes, longer than three minutes without breathing. Can't go longer than three days without drinking. Can't go longer than 30 days without eating. I need to feed this earth suit that I'm in if it's gonna carry my soul, right? So the most direct way to have this earth support our health is through touching it. So we do a lot of indirect ways. You know, we grow supplements and we grow food and we press juices and we have air purifiers and water purifiers and those are all great, but you can directly touch the earth and also receive a whole different avenue of benefit um, con conductively through conductive health. So um, I don't know if that's helpful, but um, so <laughs> could someone say to me in the chat, like, why is it keeps it telling me to swipe right and left? I don't even know what that means. I'm ignoring it. What do I, what, I don't know what to do with that. Um, yeah, I agree that heart, mind, coherence is turbo charge breaker. I know. And it's instantaneous. So with that's one benefit of adding grounding to it for sure, because if it's meditation or mantra, like we talked about a little bit ago, it does have to be somewhat prolonged. Um, to get your brain to go in those alpha healing patterns. So you can't just like say something three times. Deep breathing is really good. You can take three deep breaths, but it's not gonna have like a sustainable health benefit. You have to really be in a long period of meditation or a long period of repeating a mantra over and over and over to really, for your body to, obviously it's instantly centering, but I'm saying for your body to go into a healing state where there's actually repair. Um, of disease progression or healing, then it's got to be sustained and it's got to be repetitive. You know, you got to do it multiple times over time. So if you get grounded, you're immediately put in the same state as meditation. So even if you just want to meditate, but you only want to do it for five minutes, if you ground while you do it, you're going to immediately get to the point that it takes 20 minutes to get at of just meditating without being grounded. Have I done a live broadcast before? No, can you tell? <laughs> so I started out with this. I wasn't even sure how I'd read questions. I didn't know. I don't know anything. This is my very first one. I'm only gonna do it for like 10 minutes because it makes me nervous because I am, I'm, um, I'm an old, old woman with technology. I didn't grow up with any of this and I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but I just get so many questions that are the exact same ones. 
so I just thought if I just did a Q and A once a week it might be um, helpful because I can't I don't answer all of the comments I just there's no way there's not enough time in the day. Um, is grounding an electrical issue? Well, so this is what's ridiculous about grounding. So there are laws that we have to ground our major appliances to keep them safe, to keep them from short circuiting or, you know, if, as a fire hazard, if there's a lightning strike. So your hot water heater is grounded and your plumbing is grounded and your um, dryer is grounded and your refrigerator is grounded. And we're taking better care of our electronics of our home than our human bodies, which also need to be grounded. So it's similar, but it's kind of pathetic that we literally have laws that we have to really take care of our electrical system of our home, but we don't ever, ever get the recommendation from our physician or just growing up learning. Oh, sorry, my dog is chewing on this cord. Hold on one second. Get off. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to show you why she's chewing on this cord. She's literally only eight weeks old, so she's... I shouldn't have brought her in. <laughs> I was thinking she was going to be my co-host, but she's actually distracting. Um, so I won't do that again. But um, so... Yeah, so one of the things I always tell people is treat yourself at least as good as an inanimate object. If, if we have to protect a fridge from a lightning strike or whatever to get it grounded, why are we not, like when we know our health is based on conductivity, like there's no health, there's no life without conductivity, without electrical impulse, like our heartbeat and our brains and me talking, the muscles moving, me thinking, me blinking, my food digesting, like it's a thousand percent dependent on energy, electrical charge impulses moving through the body. And there's no coincidence that every single cell in your body is conductive. It's because that's how health works. So it kind of begs the question, why would we be conductive from head to toe and not have something that supports our health in that way? And it starts to dawn on you, well, we do have things that support our health and it all basically comes from the earth, that fresh air that we need, that water that we need to drink, the food we need to sustain our health. So maybe the fact that the earth is a global electrical circuit that has DC energy, which is not the fake man-made stuff, but the natural current of the universe, which is, it's called DC, which is a direct current. The whole earth runs off it. So does everything in the universe. And so does all everything, you know, on our planet, including plants and animals. And then we're totally conducted from head to toe, every cell, every cell from your immune system to your a neuron, to a liver cell, to your bones to your connective tissue, to the plasma in your blood, all of it. The second you get grounded, your entire body is grounded like that, like turning a light switch on. And we run off DC energy and our heart beats off DC energy and our brain functions from DC energy and our muscles move because of DC energy. That's it. That's the only way we're alive and functioning. So how is it so hard to put two and two together that um, probably it's natural for us to be like, touching the earth as well as drinking water from the earth and breathing air from the earth's atmosphere. It's probably part of health. And by being so disconnected and living up in insulated homes and driving vehicles with rubber tires that keep us insulated and wearing shoes, obviously we're making a disconnect happen, right? Mm -hmm. So even if that wasn't enough for you, now we've got 30 years of medical studies that also show. And many of them, they're not just like anecdotal, they're like double blind placebo based studies, many of them, because it's very easy to actually do that because you can use a grounding tool or a ground cord or a patch and, or, you know, they can sleep on a grounded mattress panel and they don't know if the cord is actually grounding them. So they're sham cords, so they are not grounded. And then you can measure heart rate variability or inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, or you can measure oxygenation, you can measure blood pressure, you can measure all of these things. You can measure digestion, you can measure muscle strength, you can measure, measure muscle soreness, you can measure how deep your sleep is. All of these have been looked at and all of them reveal that grounding does put your body in a healing state. So I don't know how that's far-fetched for so many people, but it, it really is. And what I really don't understand is how is that far-fetched for physicians? Because we know as, as everyone knows, but you're taught in medical school that we assess the body's health through assessing its DC electrical conductivity. So if I'm worried about someone having a seizure disorder, I look at the DC energy in their brain on an EEG. If I'm worried about someone had a heart attack, I'm gonna look on an EKG at the electrical activity of their heart. If I'm worried someone uh, is losing muscle strength and has um, ALS or something, we can measure the muscle the conductance of the muscle with an EMG. So these are all ways that we know that we need to look at the electrical health of the body to see if it's functioning and how it's functioning. 
But some reason we haven't flipped it to say, if I can diagnose illness that way, maybe I can boost health that way. Maybe the body does actually run off of DC energy. I mean, I'm using DC energy to diagnose. Why am I not using DC energy to treat or prevent? And that's where I come in because that is what my passion is. Um, it's to kind of just spread the word about it and legitimize it. Um, I'm a physician, an MD, and I've looked at the research and I study it and research it all the time as well as run my own with my own patients. And I can, I can absolutely vouch if you, if conventional medicine appeals to you more than like alternative medicine, um, I was conventionally trained and I can just tell you, and you can also go to my website and read 30 years of medical studies showing what intuitively I'm pretty sure you already know, which is we're not born in a plastic bubble. You know, we were born to enjoy being on this earth. Um, and it wasn't until very recently that we were super separated from it. So to me, it's logical even without the medical studies, but, um, f for those that want the medical studies, man, when I first started getting into grounding, there was 20 years, which I thought was impressive for some, for a holistic thing. That's pretty impressive. There's not 20 years of research on supplements. There's not 20 years of research on a lot of the prescription medications or surgeries or conventional things that we do. There's not. So for there to be 20 years and now it's been, I've been diving into this for at least 10 years. And so now it's 30 years and there's been continued medical studies that have come out. Um, the most recent one was babies. Well, no, that's not even the most recent one, but all recent one was um, babies in the NICU that shouldn't have been born yet. So you know that's not placebo in their head because they 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 don't even can't even regulate their own body temperature. They can't feed themselves. Um, they're they have an immature lung system, and grounding those babies increased their um, survival. So you know, if a little little baby that's not even supposed to be born yet can benefit from being connected to the earth, um, I think it should be a lifelong habit that starts when we're born and doesn't end until we do. Um, one time I put those tens electrical pads on my grounding one. Yeah, I've heard of people doing that. I ha I'm just going to say I have never tested it personally, so I don't want to totally endorse it, but I'm sure that probably works because, I mean, it's the same thing as an EKG pad, like uh, I would use in, a, in the medical setting in an office to put on and read the heart, the DC energy of the heart going through. Um, so I'm sure if it's a conductive pad with a little conductive gel and you're sticking it on there and then you're connecting it. The only thing I get nervous about when people like do homemade versions, um, well, first of all, I don't want them to replace that from going outside because there's a lot of other health benefits of going outside. So I don't ever like indoor tools to totally replace that. But then the other thing is there are a lot of conductive materials out there, but you do need to have a safety mechanism in place because there are lightning strikes. I was actually in a home that was struck by lightning and caught fire when I was in college. I was home over break and we, I mean, I was, I had just gotten out of the shower and my roof was on fire and I'm so glad I wasn't electrocuted and I was, had a towel wrapped around me and the the fireman was coming and we didn't spend the night in our house, obviously. And there was a lot of damage. So it's not that rare. It does happen. And so I would not want to be connected to a wire that was just a straight wire to the ground or a straight wire to my home's electrical system. I want to have a fuse in place that would blow in a second and protect you. And no surge could go up to the grounding tool, um, or a resistor in place that, that, prevents any surge from traveling up the line. So that's, so if you are skilled enough to be able to insert a fuse into your ground line, awesome. Make your own, make your own tools at home for sure. And what's crazy is we have so much conductive things in our home. Like you could literally make a ground cord with a conductive wire and add a fuse so that you know you're safe, a quick blow fuse, or just buy a grounding cord. Um, you can get those very easily and inexpensively. I have some on my website as well. Um, and of course I think my cords are, my cords are made in the USA and handmade and like literally, um, ethically produced, let's say, instead of mass produced overseas. Um, so of course I recommend my cords, but whether you make your own or you buy a cord, you can literally clip it to a piece of aluminum foil and sit on that or put your foot on it. I mean, it's just so easy. Like a, a cookie sheet. I have a video where I clip it to a spoon and then I put the spoon in my bra strap like this. That's it. And then I was working. And I was grounded the whole time because I just have this metal spoon. Or you could even, if you get an actual cord or put an alligator clip on your homemade one and just clip it, clip it to something that's touching your skin, clip it to the waistband, clip it to a bra strap, clip it to something so that it's held against your skin. You'll be grounded. You don't even need a grounding tool. Um, I brought grounding thing, sheets and I think it made me fatigued. It could, fatigued it could, okay. Someone brought, bought grounding sheets and it made them fatigued. Okay. So let me tell you this. There is, um, I don't want to strike up controversy, but if you're using a standard ground cord, which um, I know you must be because all the companies that make 
I'm sorry, but they're like pretty crappy, those grounding sheets, because they're made out of polyester or they're made out of plastic and they're all made in China and they're all going to go in a landfill and they're all going to basically clog up Mother Earth even after we die. I just doesn't make sense to me to have all these plastic grounding tools. I hate them. But anyway, so I don't do sheets because I won't do that fake polyester crap. So I know you had to have been using a standard ground cord instead of my um, electrosensitive grounding cord. So in a standard ground cord, now keep in mind, I'm not knocking those. Many people use them and find benefit, but if you are grounded through a standard ground cord and you feel worse, so you feel more fatigued or you feel like not as good or your pain increases or you feel like heart palpitations or something like that, that does happen once in a while. And that's because you're electrosensitive and there is a tiny amount of AC energy that can go up a standard ground cord, tiny, and it doesn't usually affect people. But if it affects you, you're feeling a very microscopic dose of an AC current going in. And so I did not like that. And I won't use a standard ground cord and I won't even put my dogs on the standard ground cord. I won't let my kids use a standard ground cord. So I invented the pure ground cord, which has a filter, stops all AC current from going up the line. So you only get the DC energy from the earth and you cannot get AC energy going up the line. And not only does it have a filter, but then it's also got a shield, a wrap that goes up the whole length of the cord so that even if you have like an electrical field or EMFs in your bedroom or your office or whatever, which most people do, the electrical field cannot resonate and jump on that line and reach you. And so it's shielded the whole way. So it's filtered right at the start of the cord and then it's shielded all the way up to you. So that's what I recommend. I also, if you want to go deeper, have an electrosensitivity class. Um, it's online. It's just two weeks, but um, I answer every single question about electrosensitivity, and it does overlap a lot with grounding because when you're grounded, you are connected to um, a healing source of DC energy, but if you're using an indoor cord, you are also possibly connected to a tiny micro AC microcurrent, which you can remove by using a pure ground cord, which again, if you want more information on that, you can click the link in my bio, and then I have a whole like pure ground Q&A whole section that you can read about what a little bit more about that cord and why you might want to switch to that cord at the end the cord was touching another but yeah so it definitely was just letting the ac energy travel up it and you're electrosensitive which is great we all should i think we all are it's just that some people's threshold is so emfs are not good for any of us because that's how conductive we are so we're all electrosensitive in the sense that whether we feel it or not, we're going to have long-term health effects of being around all these toxic man-made EMFs. Um, so I actually think it's better to be electrosensitive and actually kind of feel it. Get a headache when, you've, when you're right next to the router. Feel kind of fatigued when you've been in a hotel that has so much freaking Wi-Fi and boosters on every level. You should be able to feel that. If, if you can't feel it, that's kind of a shame because that means you won't protect yourself from it at all. And so your conductive body is going to be bombarded. <laughs> It's going to be bombarded by those EMFs. I have two dogs. Here's the baby. I got a bigger one there. <laughs> that wasn't good. Um, anyway, so electrosensitivity is a way to protect yourself. You can feel it when other people can't. So you will probably avoid whatever gives you a headache or whatever makes you have insomnia or whatever's giving you depression or anxiety. You'll probably avoid it, right? And you'll probably educate yourself about it and learn more about it. And actually, then your body's going to be healthier longer than someone who maybe they didn't get a headache from it. Maybe they didn't fatigue. Maybe they can wear their eye pod thingies all day long and they don't feel it but their body's not protected just because you don't feel it doesn't mean on a cellular level it's not damaging right so i think it's great that you are electrosensitive and i i i think we all are and um, it's just not a lot of awareness about it i think a lot of people have insomnia a lot of people have mood disorders a lot of people get chronic headaches and they don't know why and i think it definitely plays a part because you have to remember every single cell in your body is conductive and every fluid in your body is conductive and not only is every cell but every cell membrane is conductive and not only is every cell membrane but everything in your cell every single part of it's conductive including the cytoplasm including the little it's called a cytoskeleton it's got little like a little structure that keeps your cell 3d instead of collapsing so even that is conductive so we are literally built with this conductive mesh this network that turns turns your body grounded like that if one cell is grounded just immediately just by the fact that they're all touching and there's fluid and exchange instantly your entire body is grounded like again i always say like flipping on a light switch so if we're that conductive and the basis of our functioning of every organ system in our body includes conductive health how do you think it's possible that we have introduced all these man-made emfs and they haven't affected our bodies. And similar to grounding, I think it makes sense, but if that doesn't appeal enough to you and you want medical studies, oh yeah, we've got lots of medical studies now that show. And I don't wanna be alarmist, like I function in a normal 
I don't live off grid. I have two kids in college. They both use their laptop right on their lap and even have the stinking, ear, whatever they're called, I, whatever, that's how old I am. I don't even know what they're called. Earbuds, things, you know, the wireless. It just, it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. It's modern society. So I don't think you need to be paranoid about it, but you can educate yourself and like maybe make your bed really safe. You can maybe turn off your router right before you go to sleep when you know you're not using it. Or maybe you can make sure all the electrical appliances are more than two feet away from your pillow if you have insomnia. You know, there's things you can do, simple things you can do. You can make sure you go outside and get grounded to kind of allow that DC energy to counterbalance some of that fake artificial man-made frequencies that are not good and are stressful. So there, and there's supplements you can, that help your body be more resilient. So there's a lot of things you can do. So it's not to be discouraged about it, but awareness, I think is a really good thing. One of my cell phones gives a headache. Yeah, but see, they yeah, some are worse than others. So, so this is something I learned from testing so many things. Oh, not to plug Apple, but there is a difference. Like if you get, if you go on Amazon and you get a charge cord, like just a generic one, and you test that with a EMF test meter, it is off the charts. It just blazes with so much EMFs pulsing out of it. If you use the Apple one, they're still there, but the field does not extend as far and it is not as hot. Yeah. So I think there is something to choosing, like, I'm not, I don't know if Nextel is good quality. I don't, I don't recognize what that is, but I'm just saying like, um, sometimes the lower quality things are actually more toxic and less protective as well. I'm not saying an Apple charger is protective in the slightest bit, but it's exponentially worse if you get, um, you know, just generic ones off of Amazon that are just unbranded. I was only grounding for a short time now, but I was, yeah, do it. Yeah, I said, do it. And you know, because even if you don't want to read the medical literature and you never visit my website, who cares? Just, and even if you aren't touching the earth, but do it, I mean, touch the earth. But even if you're not, do you know, there's so much benefit just from being outside, just being exposed to the ions outside, just being exposed. There's medical studies. I'm talking about medical studies. I'm not talking about, oh, it just feels good. Or someone thinks it's good. Or I'm talking about real studies that show like, for example, patients in the ICU who can just see a tree out their window. That's it. Just see greenery. They use less pain meds and they are discharged from the hospital sooner. I mean, it's a real, putting a potted plant, not grounded. This has nothing to do with grounding. This is just to show our bodies do crave nature and it puts our body in a healing state. Just putting a potted plant next to in a workstation. So there was a study that showed that putting a potted plant in a computer room in a computer lab where people were working increased productivity and attention, like concentration. So, and that's just seeing greenery. So being out in it and there's plant pheromones and essential oils, there's microbiota that we need to be exposed to. There's vitamin D from the sun. We need our circadian rhythm to be synced. So we really do want to go outside and I think it's sad if a day goes by and we didn't know what the weather was, you know, we didn't even go outside and see the weather. Uh, we didn't know, you know, what the temperature was and we didn't know what time of day, you know, if we lose track of time of day. And if we don't even know what, like, if you don't even stand out there and look up at the moon for a split second and know if where we are even at in the universe, like where, what phase is the moon even in? I, I'm not like a super astrologically based person or I, I'm, I tef, definitely tend to be more conventional and not go down those roads. But I mean, I'm just saying like as a living human being on this planet, I, I want to be oriented to time and space and like enjoy the couple blips of life I have for a split second while I'm alive here. I don't want to be so disconnected that I, I don't even experience life on this planet, right? So Go outside, even if you're not going to touch something conductive, even if you're not going to touch a tree, even if you're not going to touch the ground, even if you're not going to stand on a sidewalk, it doesn't just still even go outside. Sit in front of a window if that's all you can do. You know, you have mobility issues. Maybe you do want to get an indoor grounding tool, but still sit in front of that window. Still get some sunlight on your face. Still look out at, or bring some more plants into your home. I mean, you do still want to be surrounded by nature. You really, really do. Our body thrives that way. It puts it into a healing state. Our phone EMF protectors a scam. The stickers that you put on them are 100% a scam. And the way they can get around it is by saying the sticker itself, if they like test the sticker itself, those are blocking EMFs from coming across, but it's only blocking it the size of a quarter of the size the sticker is. So they can say, oh my God, it blocks 99% because they put some shielding material on it. And it does for that little quarter, but then you stick that in your pocket and it's false confidence. It's unethical to me to sell those. It's like selling a sunscreen that you're telling someone is 50 
SPF, but it maybe has one SPF, an SPF of two. So you can say it has SPF, right? But that person's going to get burnt and up the risk of skin cancer and photo aging and all that stuff. And it wasn't fa- a big thing at the beginning of uh, being aware of what UV rays do um, was people would wear sunglasses, but they didn't know to put UV protection. So you would have this false comfort because the sun's not going right in your eyes and your eyes would actually dilate and open up more because they felt shaded, right? And there was no UV protection. And so all that UV was going into people's eyes and giving them cataracts over time. I mean, it's just so bad for you. So, and so it's unethical, I think, to like sell sunglasses that aren't UV protective or to sell sunscreen that doesn't have. So the same with this, like, yeah, you can get away with saying it blocks it's shielding, but no, it's not protecting you. It's selling a product. So I don't like that. Yeah. I would not wear, use the stickers. What does work. And I do have these on my website is a sleeve that you can put your cell phone in that blocks it all the way around. But honestly, like, and a lot of people love them. I mean, I sell them quite often, but you can just put your phone on airplane mode. I mean, it's really not, I don't understand why people would put it in a, a protective sleeve as opposed to just turn their phone off or on airplane mode. But I think it gives them a, a, a sense of like, I can have immediate access. It's still on. And the second I open this little pouch, I have all my texts and my phone message, you know, I can use it in an emergency. So I do think psychologically it might be a little bit like if you really want that quick. And also with the phone shields that I carry, there's an outer pocket so that the phone, so like, say you're waiting for an important phone call or an important text. Like for me, it would be like my kids driving back to college and I want to make sure they got there safely. So I want to keep my phone on, but I don't want, uh, but and I want to keep it in my purse or my pocket because I'm, I'm going somewhere. I would put it in that outer pouch so that it can still receive the calls and I'll still be alerted and I'll get texts and stuff. But then I make sure that the whole, but it's a whole shielding pouch that covers the entire side of the phone. And I make sure that that is between me and the phone. So I'll put it in my purse oriented. So the shielding is between me and my phone. So it is more protective than just a little sticker. And then the other thing that I um, like even more, and I'm sort of proud of myself, I make these myself, um, kind of invented it. It's a bedside shield. And you can find these in my shop as well, just by clicking the link in my bio. But basically, I just take these plastic uh, um, clear uh, picture frames, and you can use any picture frame. Um, And I put in there some very good shielding material into the picture frame. And then I put that by my bed. And this is one of my best sellers as well. So it's a little picture frame. So it's slanted like, I don't know. Okay, pretend this is a shielding material. And my phone's going to go here and I'm sleeping. That's my bed. And you just stick your phone behind it. You can keep your phone on. Now, is your phone still radiating EMFs that are unhealthy? Yeah, and for sure. But this is casting a shadow, like it's not going through this. It's, so it's going all this stuff. So I'm not saying that it's better than turning your phone off or not even bringing it into the bedroom. Of course, that's better. But if you have to have it on, if it's your job. So like if I'm on call and, I'm, and I can sleep a few minutes before I get called to go see a patient, I can't turn my phone off. But I can put it behind the shield so that it kind of casts this like ah relaxing shadow, you know, because it's not going through that other side. So imagine putting like a light bulb behind this you're going to have a little bit of a shadow. Yeah, it's still going to be light over here and you're still going to have light reaching you, but you're going to be a little bit in this shadow that's protective. And so it's definitely better than nothing to put a bedside shield next to your bed. Um, You can put baby monitors behind it. You can put other things behind it as well. How is it different than the phone stickers being a scam? Um, The phone pouch do you mean or the bedside shield either one of those the only difference i i agree with you i mean obviously it's better just to turn your phone off or use it less or not even have it on you but um but at least it's blocking the entire space between the phone and you that's the difference so if you have the phone pouch again if you want to keep your phone on and it's receiving calls and texts on this side you're just going to put that in your pocket so that the pouch is between you and the phone so it's not a direct going right into your body. It's just cutting it down. The sticker, I mean, you could say it's cutting it down, cutting it down, but most people put the sticker on the back and then they're holding the phone like this. So it's actually, to be dead honest, making it worse for you because you put your sticker here, right? And you're using your phone here. So not only are all the EMFs still reaching you, but it's actually blocking it this way. So any that would have gone out through that sticker are actually being reflected back to you. So to the user, it's increasing your exposure. The sticker people can get away with saying it's shielding and decreasing EMF exposures, um, but it's not user-friendly. Bedside shield, what material is the shield made with for the bedside shield? Um, I don't even know what it's called. I think it's called Co- Cobaltex. 
It's kind of expensive because it blocks all three different kinds of radiation, so electromagnetic and high frequency radiation, which our cell phones use all of. So, um, so it's really good stuff, and um, you can you can buy it yourself, get big sheets of it. Um, but if you don't want to go through the bother, then I have those bedside shields on my website because I can get that fabric. You know, I buy large amounts so that it's cheaper, to, and I cut it up for you myself, and it's just a little bit cheaper that way because I buy like a whole huge like hundred meter roll. You know what I mean? So um, you probably can buy a little a little piece of it though. How are you shielding? No, I'm not. So this is the thing of living in real life. No, I'm not. There's so much of my day I'm not shielded. Driving my car. You know, cars have a lot of EMFs, especially my, um, I have a hybrid. So, oh my God, so much. No, I'm not shielded. And using my, I run an online business and I am on my computer a lot and I'm not shielded. Um, you can wear shielding clothing. You can wear shielding clothing. And when I travel, I like to do that. I have a shielding cape with a hood and I like to just fall asleep on an airplane with that on. Um, so you can do those things. I, I don't, I just make sure that I am not doing that for the majority of my day and that I'm doing resiliency practices that boost my own health. So I know I'm hydrating well. I know I'm taking supplements that reduce inflammation in my body and neuroinflammation, which is the worst part of EMF exposures. So that neuroinflammation is so bad for our brain and it has long-term damage. And so anyway, I was going to go off on a tangent, but I won't. But so I think it's all about balance. I don't think we have to totally live off grid and certainly I don't again. And I have no control over my pretty much adult children now who, right. And so it's just, can you balance it out though? Can you make sure that you're getting good sleep? Can you protect maybe your sleeping place? Can you find one zone that has very little EMFs? You can use an EMF test meter and test. Do you have one room in your house that is the least amount of EMFs? Or do you want to use shielding in that one room so that maybe you can sleep deeper? And do you want to take some supplements? And do you want to make sure that you're going outside and connecting with a, the real source of healing energy, which is the DC energy from the earth? And you want to make sure you're doing that every single day? Then you're really going to be leaps and bounds above most people who don't do any of those things. And still our body is resilient. Still the basis of life on this planet is resiliency. So even if you do nothing and you don't like grounding and you just, and you're an air traffic controller and you just have constant EMS, hopefully you still have a long, healthy life because our bodies are super resilient. But I'm just talking about optimizing our health and feeling even better. And especially for those who are electrosensitive, you're going to really notice a difference if you start learning about these things and taking some protective measures. And again, do you have to go live in a cave? No, you really don't. You just have to have balance. It's like you can go, you can fast for a week and then eat really healthy. And you're, if anything, your health probably improved. So you can go without grounding for a little while, or you can have other unhealthy things, you know, drinking a bottle of wine or whatever, uh, being on your laptop. But as long as you're also balancing out with healthy things, I think our body is just so, so resilient. We can go through horrendous, stressful things. We can be traumatized. We can be homeless. We can be displaced. We can be abandoned. We can have genetic illnesses we can have cancer and we can recover from all of these things and some people have all of those things all at once we can have horrible things happen to our physical bodies and our mental bodies and our soul and traumas that are just devastating and still return to health that's how healthy and resilient and amazing the human body is just absolutely astoundingly amazing i have an emf necklace from emf harmony they have the sticker too for laptop phone and wi-fi I'm just going to be dead honest. Um, no, I don't believe in any of those. Um, I, I just, I don't. Um, I, again, they can get away with saying they're shielding because the actual metal pendant is, it is shielding for that one little quarter size part of your body. But is it shielding your body? Do, do, do we think it puts a magic shield around your body? No, not in the slightest bit. It, it's not. I can't sleep. Maybe the bed shield will help me. I think so. Yeah. And so the bed shield, if you just want to like start with something simple, that's so easy to do and it's inexpensive and um, immediate benefit. You'll feel when your phone is, when some of those EMFs are blocked or just experiment if you possibly can not have your phone near you, just not even bring your phone in there. Um, But 
you can do more and more and more and more. So if you see even a little bit of benefit with that, then that is cluing you in that that is probably contributing to your insomnia. I'm sure it is. And there's more things you can do, like simple things. Like, so all of our walls have a, like cords and wires going through it. And so they all radiate an electrical field, which does affect our brain. So if your bed, which most of ours are, is pushed up against the wall, and you even have a pillow against the wall and you're trying to sleep like that, you're in an electrical field, even if you're not near an outlet, even if you don't have your lamp right next to you, but a lot of people also have a lamp and then they're charging their cell phone. But even if you don't, just from the wall, there's an electrical outfit, uh, electrical field that is affecting your ability to fall into a deep restorative sleep. So if you can even just pull every centimeter makes a difference. If you can pull your bed even six inches away from the wall, that's going to cut that electrical field that's reaching you in half or maybe even more. So I always like to tell people if they're looking for like um, a headboard, you know, those bookshelf ones that are like deep because you can put books in it. You know, they're like shelves. So that they, so that way the bed doesn't look kind of ridiculous. But I mean, if you can float your bed in the middle of the room or angle it so it looks cool and it's pulled away from the wall, that would be you could even just try that tonight and see if you sleep better. And if you do sleep better, then you know that that's for sure a part of it. Anyway, and you can go on and on and on. You can get EMF test meters and you can really know what you're dealing with. You can also then go around and test your whole house and say, you know what? This empty guest bedroom actually has less EMFs. I'm going to switch. I, I'm switching. That's my room now. Or I'm going to sleep on the sofa because down here is actually further away from whatever's out. You know, it, it just depends on what's outside of your home or your apartment or where you live. It, you know, just a little bit of distance can make a big difference. Or maybe there's a room that's furthest away from your router. Now, obviously, ideally, you turn your router off at night. But even if you're not going to, just every foot away from it, you get the exposures decrease. So distance is a huge friend, even if you don't want to do anything else. What are your thoughts on grounding blankets? Oh, well, so my thoughts on grounding blankets is are, they're fantastic because you can't always get outside. And also, so at first I resisted indoor grounding tools because I really think people need to be outside but it's also kind of rude to be like walk barefoot. Like that's not a solution for most people. And there's a lot of people with mobility issues and that's really not fair. There's a lot of people recovering from very serious things like surgeries and kids just go waltz outside. Um, and, and some people that it's not only a health concern, but a safety concern to be outside. So there has to be a way to ground indoors. So I, but on the market, most grounding things are made out of plastic and I won't do that because if I'm saying that the earth is the only way that my earth suit is healthy because I'm drinking water and I'm breathing air and I'm eating food from the earth and I'm touching the earth. So I depend on the earth to have at least an earthly experience. I'm not saying that we don't have soul energy and, and life past this, but for, for while I'm in this earth ride, I do want to take care of my body and I do depend on the earth. Um, so I need to have a way for people to connect with that even when they can't get outside and go walking around. And I don't want it to be made out of plastic because that's what drives me crazy is there's so many polyester sheets, plastic leatherette, which I hope you know means vinyl, just plastic. It's just plastic. It's just different forms of plastic so they can get around saying, you know, maybe it's no PVC, but it's still plastic. It is still going to sit in a landfill for hundreds of years after we're gone. How is that thanking Mother Earth? Like, how is that sustainable? We are just screwing over everyone who comes after us. Why would we do that when we can make grounding tools out of organic materials that biodegrade? So that's what is on my website. If you ever click the link in my bio and hop over to my website, I sell organic, all natural, biodegradable, hand-sewn, ethically made, locally made by seamstress that I, I go to her shop and I say, here's what we're going to make this week. And she sews it for me and hands it back to me. And it's these beautiful organic materials made out of, you know, one side is conductive with conductive, um, fabrics. And then the other side is usually organic hemp or organic cotton, depending on what tool you, um, get. So like talking about a blanket, I have a grounding blanket that is, uh, organic cotton on one side and then this beautiful conductive with, which has nothing but stainless steel fibers and cotton. So it's all, natural. So it's not toxic to you. It's not hot, sweaty. You're not sleeping on plastic. And then you're not thinking that it's going to rot in a landfill for, I mean, s centuries. Like how weird is that? I, I don't know. I don't like it. So I think I like grounding blankets, but I don't like the plastic ones that are mass produced in China that every other grounding company in the world is trying to make a dime off of. I don't like that. So that's why I have a conflict about it. Cause usually when I talk about grounding, people just go on Amazon and they just buy some crap or they go to, you know, earthing.com and they just get mass bulk produced crap basically. Um, do I recommend conductive socks to pair with the grounding shoe stairs? Yes. Well, I mean, I, so it depends on 
I'm one of those girls. My daughter hates this. I don't wear socks. I don't like socks. So I wear sneakers with no socks. And my kids are like, that is really gross. So for me, I have stickers on it and I don't wear the socks because I have barefoot and they're touching the sticker. But if you're going to wear a sock, ah, oh, I mean, you might be able to get away with like not buying special conductive socks because if you have a very thin, all natural sock, like all cotton or all wool, and it's super thin and you're exercising, so your foot's getting sweaty, the moisture, it might be enough that you can ground through it. You probably aren't instantly grounded. If you test it with a ground test meter and you put fresh socks on and then you slip your foot into the shoe and then you stand on the earth and you test it probably not grounded but then go on a 10 minute walk and come back and you probably are but if you want to take the guesswork out of it and also because so many socks I mean they have plastic fibers in it like you know to make it elastic so that you can wear them over and over and over and they, they fit and they're not just hanging off your foot so understandably they're usually made out of synthetic materials or have some kind of elastic in it which will is like plastic and will block you off so there's no point of putting a shoe sticker on if you're going to put um, a synthetic like polyester sock on, you know, cause that will block it. Um, so if you don't want to buy conductive socks, I have them on my website. I have knee highs, I have athletic, uh, socks, and I even have dress socks for work. Um, and they're all conductive. So the second they touch that grounding sticker, they ground your entire foot. It encases your entire foot in that. And then instantly your whole body is actually grounded. So I love those. Um, I just don't, but I'll be honest, I don't personally use them. I just go bare, I go barefoot in my shoes, even in boots, like rain boots and stuff. I, I just don't put socks on. Um, do you have any suggestions for internal consumption for severe restless leg syndrome? Okay. Well, I'm just going to only give some generic advice because obviously I'm not your physician and I don't want to go too deep in like there's prescription muscle relaxants and stuff like that. But just off the top of my head, I would definitely say to sleep grounded because it does put your body in a healing state and it does decrease muscle tension, but I would make sure I'm using the pure ground grounding cord with it so that I'm not introducing any electrical fields into my bed or going up the cord so that it is truly relaxing and grounding, just grounding. That's it. So I would sleep grounded and use a pure ground EMF filtering ground cord clip to that. And then I would load up on magnesium. In fact, I would take a Epsom salt bath with tons of magnesium flakes in it so that I'm transdermally getting magnesium. And then I actually love this so much. I do also have this on my website. I have a magnesium lotion because I get, oh my God, the worst headaches and oh, so much tension in my shoulders and stuff. So I put magnesium lotion directly. Again, I soak in a bathtub, but then I still put it on my skin so that it just stays. And then I even take magnesium, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the one that I take. It's called, I think it's called muscle cramp and tension relief, something like that, because it has magnesium and lemon balm and a couple other things that really help your muscles relax. And I take that before bed. And I also take CBD oil. And that is also really, really relaxing. So generically on your own without, you know, like obviously go see your physician, but I would recommend sleeping grounded, taking that Epsom salt bath, putting some magnesium lotion on and taking that supplement. Um, and if you want to, I can tell you the exact supplement. If you send me an email, my email is conivermd at gmail.com. And I can send you a, like a link in my online pharmacy to the exact muscle relaxant supplement that I take. And then I would take CBD oil as well. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. If you haven't tried, even if there's just one of those things you haven't tried, add that in and see if it helps. Does taking electrolyte capsules increase grounding benefits? Yes. Um, so most of us are, even if you don't want to ground, I definitely think we should be on um, electrolyte replacements, like especially magnesium. Again, we're all magnesium deficient and even just magnesium deficiency can give your heart like, so I think people, some people die of a heart attack, but it's actually because they don't even have the minerals for their heart to conduct properly for conductivity, healthy conductivity of our brain, our heartbeat and all the muscles in our body, as well as everything else, we really do need electrolytes. Um, that's why it's one of the first labs. If you ever walk into an urgent care or a doctor's office or a hospital, one of the first labs they're going to draw is your electrolyte panel to make sure you've got potassium and you've got magnesium and you've got calcium and you're okay and you're stable. That's one of the first, they'll hang a bag. And sometimes even before they even test that, they'll hang a bag that has electrolytes in it and start hydrating you. So electrolytes are really important and we usually don't get enough through the food anymore because our soil is so depleted that you can't even, it's pretty much impossible to get magnesium enough through our food naturally, even if you eat super, super healthy. So, um, so I do recommend supplementing those. And yes, it is related to grounding because you have to have moisture and you have to have electrolytes for the human body to really get grounded. Um, think of it this way. So 
especially with the moisture, like you have to be really well hydrated. It does, and your skin has to be hydrated, and then that will make you ground faster. Um, I always think people are like, well, if I have a wooden bench or if I'm up on a, my wooden deck or uh, can I use a, like a, a walking stick that's just, you know, a piece of dead wood basically to ground? No, because without the moisture and the electrolytes and the movement and the, the life, it's not, it, it can't ground. It's now an insulatory thing. So actually the dead parts of your body, like your hair and your fingernails are insulatory and your dead skin calluses will block you from grounding. So you want to be hydrated. And so the same thing with the lumber, if you're up on a deck, that's all lumber, you're not grounded through that for sure. There's ways to get grounded. You can put a ground stake and then run a cord up onto your deck. Or again, if you have a hiking stick, I have these on my websites, these little DIY kits. So you can ground that stick because I have a conductive ribbon that is just like tape basically that goes right up the side to your hand. Well, then you're grounded, but you have to have something conductive and moisture and electrolytes. So yeah, really good hydration and electrolyte um, supplements will enhance grounding for sure. What type of magnesium is best for supplementation? Um, I don't, I wish I had my bottle in front of me. In fact, I think the next time I do a Q&A, if I do another one, if you guys think I should even do another one, um, I, I think I'll bring some, some of my grounding tools and supplements and I'll just have them with me so I can show you. Um, I think the one that I take has like a combination of three different forms of magnesium because some are better for your brain, some are better for your muscles and some are better for like, if you run constipated, it helps like you move your bowels and stuff. So like, just depending on what your needs are. Um, but I kind of recommend all of them. So I would get a formula. There's, I think there's some company that sells a supplement that's called TriMag because it has all the three forms together in one supplement. Um, I think I would do that as opposed to picking just one because all of your body needs magnesium, all of it. So we want all the forms. Um, so that it's distributed everywhere, I think. Thoughts on copper? Um, well, love, hate. I love, hate it because, um, you know, copper's toxic, which is why you can make an IUD out of copper and it, you can't have a viable fetus unless you pull that copper out real quick the minute you know you're pregnant, but otherwise it is incompatible with life. Um, I don't like copper directly on the skin. I don't love shoes that use copper inserts, but I think if it's if it's on the skin, it's okay. In the body, it's not a good idea. I don't like supplements that have copper in it. I know a lot of supplements have copper in it and they think it's a trace metal that we need. I feel like we're exposed to so many different trace metals that we don't need to add extra copper. And again, copper is a toxin, but people don't mind toxins. I mean, fluoride is a toxin and people just gargle and swallow and use fluoride, I mean, in the public water supply. So, you know, I don't choose personally copper as the conductive element for the grounding tools that I make or the things that I use, like the shoes that I wear. I just won't use, I don't want direct skin contact with copper for long periods of time. I'm not saying you're going to keel over and die if you wear a grounding shoe that has a copper rivet in it or in the sole. I mean, it's fine, but I prefer to avoid long-term exposure to copper. And the other thing about copper is it's not a great super great long-term way to get grounded because it does oxidize and the coating that oxidiz oxidization, if I'm even saying that right, but the oxidized outer layer that, you know, how it turns green, um, is just going it, to, it, it's just putting a coating basically on the outside that is not conductive. So I don't know. It's kind of has to be, it's the least, I like stainless steel. Let me explain really quick why I like stainless steel. As a physician, I'm used to stainless steel. That is what we use in the hospital. That is what, you know, bed pans are made out of and surgical equipment is made out of because it lasts the longest. You can autoclave that stuff and bring it right back out and use it on the next patient. And it's really, really durable. So that is why most of my products either use silver because it's all natural and there's not a lot of silver allergies or stainless steel because in medicine, stainless steel is like the creme de la creme because it's going to last the longest. So if I make a grounding mat, I use stainless steel as the conductive fiber because I want my customer and patient to be able to wash it. You know, with some of those sheets that uh, those cheap plastic polyester sheets, there's like a warning label in there saying like, 
skin oils will make it non-effective over time and you can't wash it, you know, because washing degrades it and you can't use this and you can't, because it just it does, you know, it just doesn't last that long. So I like a stainless steel thing because then you can wash it as much as you want. You can even iron it, use it over and over and over, and you should be able to use it for years and years and years without worrying about it losing its conductivity. So for me, it's stainless steel. Copper will ground you. I don't think it lasts as long and copper is toxic. Silver is fantastic, but again, it doesn't also last as long. It does tend to biodegrade. So it's great for things that don't need to be washed, but I don't think it's a good choice for sheets and blankets personally. Unrelated. What is a day in my life like? <laughs> um, I'm in transition because I'm an empty nester now. I have two kids that are both off at college and you can probably tell I'm an empty nester because I have a new puppy <laughs> to fill my void. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I wake up at like 730 um, and I do a lot of work on the computer and I, you know, I'm always running health classes and answering questions that way. And then I do personally oversee every single grounding product that's made that I carry. And I do honestly personally pe test and package every single one myself. So most of my afternoons are literally wrapping grounding tools and getting them in the mail to people all over the world. So honestly, I'm just like mostly a glorified um package person, you know, like that's mostly what I do. Um, but I invent test and sell and ship grounding tools, basically ones that I feel are ethically created and are also eco-friendly. So, um, so I really stand behind them. Like I, I really do. I'm not some huge corporation. It's literally just me. So I stand behind absolutely everything I say, do every online class I run, every email I send, everything I say, every product I ship out, like I stand behind it cause it's me.